G'day guys and welcome back to another 32 builds video. It's been a little while since the last one and now that uni exams are done and dusted you can expect videos from me to come more frequently. Since the last video the channel has hit 1000 subscribers and it's seriously a crazy feeling. Thank you so much to everybody who watches and subscribes to this channel. In this video we'll be continuing the progress on the Datsun 1200 Ute. All the rust in the firewall and windshield cowl area has been completely fixed and we're gonna proceed with getting the engine bay looking beautiful so the run gear can go back in. Yes, there's still plenty of rust in other places of the car, given my lack of rotisserie and or hoist, plus the fact that I'm doing this in an apartment car park, this is the order that I've chosen to get through the build. Let's get into it. I'm starting with removing bits of the engine bay that I don't want anymore. This includes the battery tray and various mounting brackets. Then any holes that I don't need anymore will be welded shut and ground down to be hidden under a thin layer of filler later on in the process. Here I'm testing out some of the aircraft paint remover on a small scale before I go lather it all over the engine bay. It's a messy process but rather than grinding all the existing paint down, it'll prevent me from clouding up the whole basement with dust. This paint stripper will eat at your skin, so I do recommend a long sleeve shirt and gloves when working with it. You'll be able to tell if you've got some on you if you feel a stinging, unbearable itch. After letting the stripper sit, I then use a spatula and a razor blade, a wire brush, then a wire brush on a drill to get it all back to bare metal. As you can see, there's a lot of good metal in here, which is nice to see. onto some filler to smooth over the engine bay. I've done a bit of research on using filler in an engine bay. The biggest worry being it'll crack under stress. The best insurance to prevent cracks is to stitch weld any seams, then use metal tech filler to form the shape. It requires a little bit heavier grit of a sandpaper, so you're gonna need another layer of general auto filler that goes on top of that. But I'll just see how things hold up only using automotive body filler. Some say it'll be fine, but I'll let you know how things go down the track. The key is to sand down the filler as much as possible, so it's like a layer of paint, which doesn't tend to crack from general vibrations and stress. Bits will probably pop off though if I get into a prang, but in that case, that'll probably be the least of my worries. 
I'm using 80 grit sandpaper to knock off and shape the filler. Doing this by hand drastically reduces the amount of dust that gets airborne, but I do let off a couple plumes when I dust off the work surface. Luckily, the parking spots around me are empty, apart from the occasional family member. Now that I'm mostly done on the rim of the engine bay, I'll seal the bare metal with some edge primer and then some filler primer on top of that. Once the whole area is done, I'll go over with more coats of primer and then with a finer grit of sandpaper to work out any of the deeper scratches and get rid of my brush strokes. The final base and clear coat will be going on with air in the future. Before working on an area, I take my time to clean and make sure that there is no rust. I do this with a stripper wheel, wire wheel and finally some rust converter. There's a couple ripples in the metal here and there that come with the panel pressed from the factory. But working on the left side, I found some ripples and deformities that aren't exactly factory. This shell has definitely been in a couple accidents in its time.
I'll paint the front of the radiator support panel with black anti-chip paint and I'll be replacing this front apron later down the track. I still need to get some areas with a wire wheel and primer and also paint at least the transmission tunnel which I've decided to do with the rear axle installed for my safety. Luckily the cab is quite short and I should be able to get most of the tunnel from the front and the rear. So that is stage one of the bay shave. Still a couple parts to prep before the final paint goes on, but that'll be for next time. I'll be using rattle cans from my local automotive paint shop to do the engine bay. The rest of the car though, I want to save for a proper spray booth paint job. As always, thanks for watching and sticking around till the end of the video. Leave a like and subscribe if you want to show support for the channel and any comments and suggestions left below are greatly appreciated. Cheers.